good morning and welcome uh, to Remy's Garage. Today we are going to be replacing the front brake discs and pads and we'll probably do the rear uh, maybe a, another day so let's get to it we'll get that off and have a look at it uh, this should be a good video So I'm just going to blow some dust off this. So this is the brakes. The disc looks a wee bit rusted. There is quite a big lip on that there. And we need to think about getting these pins out. And the fitting kit and the caliper off. So let's take that from there. So I've got the safety in there. I've got the jack and axle stands and the air jack here just to turn the wheel this way so I can get a bit of a, a bite on these bolts. So makes it that wee bit easier. <coughs> for the bottom one first I think there we are normally the, the L32 have got the the 12 sided hex bolt on it but these ones don't so I'll leave that one in just now the, the top one and I'll try and drive these pins out I've got a wee bit of a WD-40 on them so a wee bit of I don't think these have ever been off before. The last time we done that, uh, we bent we bent all the pins because they just wouldn't move. So we'll let that sit for a while. I'll try and get a socket on this bolt that comes out here. I think it's 14, I'm not sure, sure. maybe bigger than that. And 13. 13, yep. See if this has got the power to get this off. Yeah, it did. There you go. So give that a wee tap. So that's moving there. Yeah, so that's going to come off. I've just got to be careful here that when we're hitting these pins, that we don't stave the end of them because they end up having to cut them off here. So we do. So give this a gentle tap. Trying to break up any rust that's in there. Uh, I'll let me take this out to take some tension off that. Coming out. <coughs> 
back up. So that bolt's come out fairly easy. Although it's the rusted parts here that try to pass through the hole can be quite time consuming. There you go. I won't put that in there, I'll probably damage the threads, but I've got a new a new bolt for that, so. Tight. Yeah, it's pretty tight that one. Yeah, totally solid. I'm just putting some WD on these bleed nipples just in case I need to take them out later on. It's not my intention to take them out, but just in case, and maybe even the, the banjo bolt. So I popped that spring off here. I just pushed that off. I've kind of slackened the pads, maybe not so much on that side just to try and take any pressure off the pins try and slacken them a wee bit this one's not moving that much, it's a bit interesting you can see that pads, are they pistons in there might be seized but we've got slack in there, I've gave it a good done, I can see it's starting to bend a wee fraction uh, hmm. I was going to put the air hammer in there. I don't want to damage the caliper. Okay, here. I might try that just to try and slacken them a wee fraction. Just to vibrate to see if we can break any rust that's in there. They're absolutely solid. I think I'm going to have to cut that off and try and punch them out like I've done the last time. Because it looks like, I it looks like, I mean, the, the, the pads themselves are pretty in poor nick. Um, so, yes, I think what's happening is I'm hitting here and it's damaging the end of that, so it's maybe not going to come out. But if I can cut that, I might be able to get something in that side and this side. It'll also allow me to pull the pads out, give me a bit more space in there. So, I think we'll go for cutting these. Let's see how we go. So I've got my wee air powered cutting tool. And we'll go for the bottom one first. Be careful not to touch this though. Possibly the worst tool ever. So there's the pad. It looks like a lot on at the end, but I think they're pretty worn. 
Uh, they look fairly evenly worn, but we'll get them out now. I need to try and get that off, but we'll try and cut this off now while we're at it. Right, there we go, that bit's out. This bit's still stuck. Solid. So I'm just trying to try and wedge that out from there. I'm trying to push that pad back here, but it doesn't look as if the the discs, the the pistons are moving. See that? tells me the pistons actually might be stuck in there which is not good I mean that should literally walk out there same as that other one done so that's not helpful unless what I do to give me an easier chance to get these out is I will clamp off this brake hose here and literally take the caliper off into the workshop. That might be give me a better chance of uh, getting this pad off and <clears throat> getting these pins out. I can oh there you go that one. So I can get them out the get them onto the workbench, which might make it easier than doing it here. So, so uh, hmm, not good. Uh, I mean, if you can see me doing another one. The pistons are going back. See it. These pistons are definitely going back. And when I do that, it should be pushing the, pushing the pistons out. But it's not. Okay, I think that's my next move. We're going to clamp this off, take the banjo bolt out, and we'll take the, the whole caliper off, which means we need to probably bleed this again, which means taking this top bleed nipple off which is always a difficult one on the inside comparison to the outside because when people bleed them they only use this one and not this one so need to be careful with that so let's get this clamped off i'll get something in there to catch any brake fluid and we'll get the banjo bolt off and we'll get the caliper off so i've got these wee clamps they're quite handy for clamping off brake pipes and stuff yeah, see, that looks okay. There it goes. It's quite a thick piece of rubber, Matt. <laughs> okay, and... We want 14. I think Ramon dot. So that's the banjo bolt out. I don't see much fluid coming out of it, which is good. Although there will be fluid in the caliper. So if I get that other larger bolt out
Now, these calipers are really heavy. I'm just doing it manually. See that. Okay, one hand. Getting the bolt out. There we go. So that lets us at least take the disc off and then we can now try and get this cleaned up a bit, get the the pad out and get the bolts off. Uh, okay, I'll get this into the workshop. And now that we've got it off, we might give this bit a bit of a clean in here. So we take the disc off, we've got this to come off here. And it looks like a Torx, but I don't know whether that's just rust in there or grease. But uh, I'm hoping that comes out pretty easily to allow us to take this disc off. So this is a T50. Seems to be getting in okay. Uh, I'll not do that with an impact, I'll try it with a wee ratchet first. And it's moving, oh, cool. That's us. Quite tight coming out. Should really be only the hand tight that. So there it's there, it's just a wee grub screw for that. And the disc now should come off. Well, I'm hitting it at the side there because I'm going to replace it anyway. It's a bit rusty in there. I think we'll get that painted. We'll even take that off. Plenty of time on my hands. Clean all that up. I'll take it for there. So I don't know if you can see on the disc. There's quite a lot of grooves in here. Uh, big lip on that there. Big, big lip. And this is where it gets rusty. I don't know whether to paint the room in there or not, I'll just maybe leave it in there, but certainly I don't know how well you can see that. So that's the inner side of the disc. The outer side is not as bad, which worries me that that inner side is, pistons are actually seized in there. So I've got the caliper on the bench. This is where the banjo bolt goes. Uh, and what I'll do, I'll try and plug that. So I've got a wee plug of some kind. Maybe just a new bleed nipple might do that. I think it's the same thread. I'm just plugging that so there's no dirt comes in there or fluid comes out. I'm just hoping that uh, doesn't leak in there. save any fluid coming out there. It won't go out there because it's a nipple that's tightened but that might come straight through. So plan is to try and get this out here. The pistons are certainly moving. I'm unsure about these now. Um, I 
that should really slide out of there. That, uh, as if it looks as if that's actually jammed in there so it's a bit worrying that that these pistons are potentially stuck I'm just trying to give that a wee hammer there My goodness, it's stuck. It's stuck coming out there. Okay, we'll keep going. I think there should be enough clearance at the bottom of that. That's that side. something uh, you see I haven't got a apprentice part here the day with me because my apprentice part has done his back in and is off his work so I'm having to muddle away myself here Side. I think I'm a wee bit slacker now. There we go. So yeah, that was pretty tight at the sides here. That pad again, it's pretty low. All the damage that they are taking out. But I'm interested to see if they pistons actually move. And the A-ones are all moving, you probably can't see that. And they're all moving. So I think maybe that that caliper was stuck in there and all the force was coming from the one side to do the braking. So uh, the, cal the pistons are certainly moving freely with my hand. I can feel them all. All six of them. So there we go. Now the challenge is is to get these out so let me have a think about how we're going to try and get these out I might try and punch them from that side if I can maybe put them up here now, I do have the air hammer but I don't want to damage them now these have actually got wee rings around them that tighten them into place because they drive in from that side so I'm just wondering if they would be able to be driven out from this side so I want to get my wee bit of wood just to stabilise that what I'll do is I've got a bit of WD-40 in these for now so while that's soaking the other alternative could be if we kind of get these to move is put a small drill down there and maybe drill them out and just put larger drills in there to see if we can get it to collapse in on itself and hopefully it'll pop out 
and you'll see when I put this back together again I'll be putting like copper grease in there, anti-seize grease with the pads etc to stop that from happening in the future Right, let me just get a bigger hammer here I think they're completely rusted in there completely rusted I don't know where I'm just wasting my time here because I might be just staving the end of that what I should be doing is getting a wee a punch now in there and I'll drill a wee hole into that if I can I don't know how tough that is, but it's bloody tough. That is hardly marking that. Hey, that's a waste of time. The drills are not even touching that. So it must be hardened steel. So how do I press that out? I've got a, a clamp on there. Push it. If we could get something in there, a clamp on it. I wonder if my clamping tool or pressing tool might get that out. What I'll do, and we'll continue soaking it. WD. So I've let these set in WD forty for a wee twenty minutes there. And I shall try and punch them out. I'm going to try a smaller type punch, just enough to get in there. I'm going to okay. I think that moved there. Yeah. yeah, it did. Cool. So that one moved, I don't know well you can see that. It's too big. And there's the wee bit out. Which is good. Do the same with the other one now. Let's see if I can just knock it out. Alright, it's moved, it moved. Good, good. There we go, that start. That's the other bit out. So that, I think that's probably the easier ones to get out because uh, these are actually, I've not got the wee locking rings on them. You're just pointed at the end. It feels 
show it. Uh, I don't know if that one moved or not. I think it did actually. Yeah. It definitely moved. I'm going to need to put that down through there. I've got a square of it on it. Yeah, it's moved, it's moved. Excellent. Huh, that's actually out, that one. So there it's there, and you'll see the wee kind of a collet round about the edge of it. It should spin, but it doesn't. Now, let's see if this last one comes out as easy as the other three. I'm going to get a wee hit on this. I think it moved. It did. Yeah, I can feel it, I can feel it now. Yep, that's out. So that's the two of them. That's the two pins out. Uh, they don't look as bad as I thought they were going to look there, but they're obviously just stuck in. So. so, next thing we'll do, we'll get this all cleaned up. Uh, we'll get the inside of it cleaned as well. Um, might even give it a wee coat of paint. We'll see. But anyway, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I think the next thing that I'll do is to try and remove these. Uh, more so that one there. So I'll reposition the camera. We'll get this up onto the device. and see if I can take them out. So I've got on the vise and it's a bit dangerous trying to take this out so I'm going to soak that again with WD-40 and the same with this one and let's just see if I can crack them, I'll probably put a socket on that just to crack it open. So I've got to be very careful with these, it's going to be tighten. Sounded okay. That sounded alright. Yeah, that one's slack, so that's good. I'll just tighten that back up again. This is a dodgy one because that's the outside of the caliper. Oh, oh, please tell me I didn't break that there. Yeah. That gets it away. I don't know whether that's sheared there or not. Looks as if it's turning. Ah, it looks as if it's turning okay. If you'd watched some of my last videos with Pat's caliper, you'll notice we broke them. Yeah, I think that's turning alright. I'm just going to keep going with that. Pretty hand tight, which I'm surprised about. So yeah, you go. And that's that's okay. I might replace them if I've got any spare. So we'll just put that back on for now, and that is actually a good result. And that is actually a good result. Getting these two off. So we will clean this up, because I've got the caliper off and I've got the disc off, I think I might give the, the 
suspension area where the caliper's going a wee clean, tidy it up a wee bit. Um, and then we'll move on to the next one. I'm not in any hurry to do this, so. Uh, cool, let's take it for there. Yeah, that's the, the pins are all out. Pistons are all moving. Yeah, they're a wee bit stiff right enough, but. Certainly all moving. And you can buy a, a piston repair kit for this. We've done this before, way back. Uh, we replaced all the pistons on it, so. Okay, let's move on. So, I managed to clean up this area here. We've taken the backing plate off, we've tidied it up, de rusted this, and got the caliper off. So, I'm just going to put the disc on the now, whilst we're waiting. Uh, I'm just going to use a wee bit of copper grease here, just on that bit there, just keep that rust away. A wee bit on there. So, all this is doing is keeping the rust away a wee bit. Okay. A wee tiny dab in that hole there. Or a wee screw. Just here. Now, the disc. <coughs> so, in this way. And a wee screw. A wee bit of Copper piece on that, and all this basically is doing is retaining the disc in place. It doesn't really need to be that tight. There we go. So that's the new disc there. So all we need to do is get the caliper back on, the pads back on, and we'll put our banjo bolt back in. So I've got two new crush washers on the banjo bolt. Let's clean that up a wee bit. And once we've got that on, I think I'll just bleed the brakes. They shouldn't need much, but I will just take some air out of them if they are there. Right, so I've got the caliper. Two bolts. Put a wee bit of thread lock on this. Hi there. This ain't no help you. Right, so that bolt's in, they get rudely interrupted there. And we'll put the bottom one in. So they bolts get torqued up to 133 newton meters, 
plus 60 degrees but we'll do that in a second so I want to make sure that these are nice and clear and here and we can get our pads in there is we'll get our banjo bolt on there. There's another wee piece of the caliper that's still to be fitted. Yeah. So that goes in there like that. So that goes in there like that. See here, guys, but I have to get my head in there. That's it, open in. washer on each side of it and I've got that which is a 13 so I've got that plugged off the now 13 just shouldn't be too tight right there's torch gravity It's not 13. I'm going to get a wee spark to tighten up. I just want to make sure these crush washers are crushed. Put in the wrong way there. leave this on the now until we've got our pads in position then we need to tighten up the two so let's see if we can get the pads in they're just upside down hmm that's definitely not going to go in there They're all coming out at the same time. So 
good to get something in there and just squeeze that. What about an old pad? See the other three pistons coming out there. Well, that one certainly came out. I don't know if that's enough to get that in. I don't think it's the, th the thickness in them, I think it's just the, the, the bits at the top. I kind of slipped in there first. I think that bottom one's a wee bit. The bottom one's just a wee bit sticking out, I think. Oh, it's a difficult one, these pads, because you can't. Probably should have put them on before I put the disc on or the caliper on. Right, okay, so that's going to go in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wee bit of copper grease in there. Hopefully just to let them slide a wee bit better. Just in there. One in. Oh, let's see if we can get the other one in. Again, okay, I'm going to try and <coughs> push them over. That bottom one doesn't like coming out. See that? Just, uh, I just feel a bit stiff, stiffer than the other side, probably because I've not been using but look at this one here, I mean it does move, so I think my next idea is to put something in there, then push that one and put something in there, so I need two wee blocks, or another wee screwdriver or something. Okay, so keep that one in. That's that one right up. And that one did come out. So I need the old pad. So 
just holding these two and push that one back in. If I can see it, that's there. Oh, believe that. Broke the screwdriver. I wonder if that piston's come right out. Looks like it. I think that piston's just come right out there. not good. That one's moving, that one's moving. That's just gonna be... It looks square enough. I think it's popped out. Hmm, not great. Moving out when I do that. Ah, it's in. Yeah, it's in now. So I think that bottom piston is certainly sticking. This may be a job for the future. So I'll try and push these two. Oh. I would like to get something in there. Hmm. So hold that one. Let's see if I can get the old pad in now. Coming out. Right, so I need to find maybe a wee bit of wood or something. I'll stick in there. Right. And what I'll do is I'll go up top and just open the reservoir let's see if I can push this one back I'm trying to screw down the first Very good, is it? There you go. So that went right back there. And that should be solid, that piston. So all I need to do now is to get my piece of wood out. Oh, that, bottom, that wasn't catching the bottom piston. Bugger. I wasn't catching the bottom piston. So, we shall try that again, but I think I'll do the, the top ones. Right. 
can't believe that bit of wood is so tiny bit short. Right. So I'm just going to try and hold this one while it's pushing the middle one back. The only other way I can think about this is opening up a bleeder and let it bleed, take some pressure off it. Take my banjo bolt off. It should take pressure off the caliper. Just let that sit there like that. Now let's see if it goes back. Good grief. That's unbelievable. It looks as if that one's stuck. See it? I'll put a wee bit of wood back in again. Definitely looks as if this piston's stuck. Literally no. There it's in. There it goes. There it's now. I hope we captured that. So I think uh, the three pistons on this side are sticking. And I think I'm going to try and order a repair kit. Because I've done this before. Let me just screw that banjo bolt back in. Put the bleed nipple back in. This leaves on the slack now. Now, let's see if we can get our, our new pad in. I'll just test fit this first. It's going to go in, so I'm just going to change my gloves. <coughs> right, and we'll get this greased up like the last one. Yeah, I definitely think they're sticking. So we put a copper piece in there. Leave it in there. Leave it on the top. And leave it here. Keep it on the back just to stop it squealing. Yeah. So our new pins go in from that end. <laughs> it feels tight. So I'll put the bottom one in first. And I'm just going to put a wee bit of copper grease on that. I'm going to have to take these back off again at some point to replace the, the pistons. Fine. 
Let's bring that caliper back a few bit. Uh, pads on it. I'm just going to tap that in. And I'll probably hit another wee tiny bit in there. Do the now, I'll just secure them in a moment. A moment. Okay. So I've got my big bolt which goes in from this end, and again a wee bit of copper grease on that. That's going straight through. Bring it on there in case we lose it. And that tin goes in there. So I've got a wee bit of copper grease on this head. Let's get in there. This is where we need to print this part. Keep us right. We need something to hold that. I think I'll leave it out of line there. Yep. Tight, the banjo bolt's tight. I'll just check that again. Yeah, that's tight. I'm going to be listening to them anyway. We need to take that off when we're bleeding it. The wee, the wee clamp, a couple of wee hoses. I need to just get back in the clips here. So that's everything done. It's a bit disappointing about the pistons. Uh, so what I'll need to do is I'll get my big bleeding kit out for this you can pull a bigger vacuum in that and get some brake fluid and we'll bleed this hopefully should be okay right, okay so this is what I'm going to use to bleed the brakes which is essentially a vacuum pump so I've got it already on vacuum connected to my air supply so you see my vacuum pulling. So huge vacuum in here. I then connect that hose, the valve here, and this is onto my brake bleed nipple. And if I open that up, uh, I'm maybe putting that like that actually. And you get my valve. Let's want to see if there's any brake fluid comes out there. Oh my god, there's one. Else. I don't know if you count that in the the hose. But it's pulling a huge amount of brake fluid out. There's some bubbles in there. Let me just stop that. Sometimes you put a wee bit of grease around that. I might be going to do that actually. Put a vacuum on it. There we go. So I can see brake fluid, a wee bit of air coming out of that. Just getting this 
hose into position. Uh, plenty of vacuum on it still. And we'll just tighten this up. seen any coming out there. There you go, and it's coming now, loads of air. So it's vacuuming now. Yeah, there's something not quite right with this back cylinder and if you look there you'll see the fluid going up into the tank so it is pulling it so you keep vacuuming this one I'm pretty happy with that one I think I'm reasonably happy. So I'm uh, I shall go and get the take that a bit. The two covers for that. Two covers for the two nipples. Then we'll do a wee check so that's on. The disc retaining nuts on. Our two big caliper bolts are topped up to 133 newton meters plus 60 degrees where banjo bolts on and not leaking it's all good our pins are in they're in enough so we've got our big bolt that's up that's on there two are tight checked in so all we really need to do now is put the wheel back on and check the brakes so that's us Everything's ready to go, what we'll do now is put the wheel back on and we'll be take it out for a test drive. So I've got the wheel back on, I've had it out for a test drive, everything looks fine, brakes are working good, no issues at all. I have ordered that a piston or caliper repair kit with the pistons and the seals on that for, for both um, calipers. So I'm not going to do the other side until I've got that repair kit here, which I think will come in a couple of days. And we'll take the other one off and we'll replace the pistons and seals on that. But that's for another video. Hope you enjoyed that. It took me a bit of time and I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>